The blood of Jesus, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is again our Gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the fifth Sunday in Lent. We're looking at John chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip, in turn, told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on the world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted from up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. My dear friends in Christ, when Jesus thought of his death and all that he'd have to go through, the suffering, the being forsaken by God, the actual going through hell in order to pay for our sins, he saw in front of him this daunting task. Jesus said, now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus, of course, when he came to this earth, he was true God, became also true man. As the God-man, he is our Savior. But as true man, he looked at the task that was ahead and that whole subject of dying, that put a dread or a fear in him. He knew that, God, that death is God's judgment against sinners. And for Jesus to die for us as our substitute, carrying the sins of the world, well, that thought, that thought filled him with dread. He almost seems to be going to his disciples and looking for some advice if he should actually go to the Father and ask the Father if he could remove this terrible thing from him, his death, his crucifixion. Well, every Christian sometimes prays similar prayers. When we're faced with different trials and troubles, we want to go to God and ask him to remove the trials and troubles, but as we go to God and ask him to remove our trials and troubles, what we always want to say is, well, God, not my will, but your will be done. You do what's best. And Jesus did the same thing as well. He was ready to go to the cross and suffer and die, and he did go to the cross and suffer and die for us. We'll never want to go to God and say, my will be done, not yours. We'll want his will to be done. And, well, Jesus, he didn't let his human nature get the best of him. He was destined for the cross. He was destined to die. The whole reason he came to this earth was to die for you and for me. And without his death, 
his earthly life really would have meant nothing. So he prays that the work for which he came into this world would, would continue. His life was on a course that was set for going to the cross, going to his death, being forsaken by God, going through hell to pay for your sins and mine. When Jesus finished his prayer here, Father, glorify your name, reading tells us that God the Father from heaven spoke. He said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. God's name had been glorified repeatedly. It continues to be glorified throughout the history of our world, but especially we can think about his name being glorified when Jesus came and did his work at, at his birth, when he came into this world when he became the God-man for us. There we see his glory. We see his glory with his preaching and teaching with the authority that he proclaimed God's word, the law and the gospel. We see God's name being glorified as Jesus performed the miracles, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, you see God's name being glorified, but God's name would be glorified in an even more wonderful fashion through Jesus' suffering and death and his resurrection. There we really see God's name being glorified. So God the Father's answer to Jesus' prayer, Father, glorify your name, his answer saying, I will glorify it, I have glorified it, I will glorify it again, is this wonderful promise and assurance from God the Father that Jesus would succeed in his mission. But Jesus said to the crowd that was there with him, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. The Father's voice, well, they thought it was thunder, or maybe an angel that was speaking. They didn't understand it but it was an attention, attention getter so that the Holy Spirit had the opportunity to work through Jesus' words so that more people could know about Jesus, their Savior, and what he was doing for them. In the events of the next few days, Jesus would go against Satan and defeat him, go against Satan, sin, death, and hell, defeat all those forces of evil, Jesus was letting Jesus was letting them know that he was going to be paying for the sins of the world, letting the people who were listening that day know that he was going to pay for the sins of the world. And, and the question that really Jesus was putting before those people was, were they, well, were, are we, as believing children of God, are we going to stand by Jesus, our Savior, or are we going to reject him and understand that if we'd reject him, who are we ultimately standing by? If it's not by Jesus, it's standing by Satan, and he's the destroyer of our souls. But we'll want to stand by Jesus, our Savior, for Jesus to gain the victory for us, it was necessary for him, it says, to be lifted up from this earth. And that's, of course, picturing how he was crucified for us, how he endured that shameful death, that most shameful death, that most horrible death. But actually, that most shameful and most horrible death was his way to victory and his way to glory. Jesus said, but I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. Through his death being crucified, he paid for the sins of absolutely all people. All people, sin had separated all people from God, but Jesus' death made it possible for all people to be drawn to him. Heaven is assured for all of those people who by the grace of God believe in what Jesus did at the cross in paying for our sins. 
the cross of Christ, really, what we could say is this ladder that bridges heaven and earth. The cross, it, it shows us the glory of Christ's victory, and we need to see Christ's glory. We need to see Jesus' glory. When Leonardo da Vinci was working on his famous painting, The Lord's Supper, he had one purpose in mind with that painting, and that was to focus people in on Christ and to, to see his glory. That's what he said. He wanted everyone's attention drawn to Christ, but for some reason, in one corner of that painting, he spent, well, he says three weeks painting this tiny ship, intricate painting, in the corner of the painting of the Last Supper. And why he did that, don't really know. But when the painting was exhibited and people were looking at it, what he noticed is that all of those people, there's Christ and they see, oh, there's that tiny ship. And they were looking at it and studying it and thinking, what a, beautiful work of art that little ship was. He actually, Leonardo da Vinci, heard the people say, just see how grand that, how grand that is. Truly he is a master artist. He heard them, he heard them say that. And when he heard them say that, he was absolutely upset and after they were gone from the viewing that day, he took his brush and with one sweeping stroke, he blotted out that ship, that little ship forever, declaring, no one shall find reason for admiring anything except Christ alone. He knew that the people needed to see Jesus and to see Jesus' glory, not that little ship. However, they didn't need to see what Jesus looked like, his actual physical appearance in that painting. For that matter, we don't even know if the Greeks that came to Philip on this day, if they ever actually got to see Jesus. They probably did, but we don't know that. The scriptures don't tell us that. But they wanted to see Jesus, and like those Greeks, we want to see Jesus. We want to see his glory. And as we think about his death, as we see his death, as we see him crucified on the cross, as we see him paying for the sins of the world, there we really do get to see his glory. We get to see what he did for us in his Easter victory, which assures us of our eternal victory in heaven. We can see his glory, and really we can see the glory that we'll have in heaven because of his victory. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, please give us churches and spiritual leaders who are always helping us to see Jesus, our Savior, our way to eternal salvation so that we see his death, what he did for us, and we see his glory, the glory that we'll have forever in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always, amen. Well, just a note. Maybe you can notice by looking behind me at the altar that we're all set and ready for our Palm Sunday service with the palms here in church. Palm Sunday schedule, normal schedule with 8 o'clock and 10.30 services and Sunday school and Bible class in between. Hope to see you for those services and please remember also next week, Holy Week, we got our Maundy Thursday communion service at 6 Thursday, 6.30, and our Good Friday Tenebrae darkness service on Friday evening, also at 6.30, and Easter Sunday we have our 
regular timed services at 8 and 10.30 with an Easter brunch and Easter egg hunt in between the services. Those are some extra announcements to share with you now. Thank you for joining me for our, our devotion today. The Lord bless and keep you always.